Rafael Leonidas Trujillo was born October 24, 1891 in San Cristobal, Dominican Republic, and he was the third of 11 children. In his early adulthood, he first worked as a telegraph operator and on the Boca Chica sugar plantation in 1916. Two years later, he applied for a commission in the Guardia Nacional while the United States occupied the Dominican Republic. The U.S. military forcefully occupied the nation for eight years. Despite accusations of forgery against him and perhaps a jail sentence, he soon became second lieutenant. In 1924, after the Americans had left the Dominican Republic, Trujillo was the head of the Dominican National Guard. The Ejercito Nacional Dominicano, or Dominican National Army, became Trujillo's virtually sovereign power base. Trujillo's control of the army made him a master of Dominican politics by 1930 and transformed the force from a substitute for marine occupation to a means of Dominican nationalism. His rise to power and extended rule can be attributed to the education he received and the relationships he formed with American diplomatic, military, and civil representatives during the Marine occupation. These Americans helped solidify his position in Dominican government, thus facilitating his ability to ultimately become dictator. September 17, 1937, on Constitution Day, President Franklin D. Roosevelt publicly spoke against all dictatorships, referring to them as cold-blooded resolves to hold power, and he continued to state that the people of America are rightly determined to keep that growing menace from our shores. However, through the institution of this statement, he and the United States hypocritically helped and even attempted to maintain the dictatorship in the Dominican Republic. From 1916 to 1924, American soldiers occupied the Dominican Republic in an attempt to control the unorganized political and financial position of the country, which was preventing the Dominican government from paying back necessary fines to the U.S. as well as many other countries. During their occupation, American soldiers tried to save the unorganized Dominican foreign debt, constructed a police force of Marine-trained Dominican soldiers, and built multiple public works for the benefit of the civilians. After the American withdrawal in 1924, Trujillo was left to control the Dominican army, and the weak government was left in the hands of Horacio Vasquez. In addition, the United States established a corporation known as the Santo Domingo Improvement Company, which was, which, in which the United States controlled the income of the Dominican economy as well as the payments it made until the debt was officially retired. In 1933, years after American soldiers left the Dominican, the administrations of both President Hoover and President Roosevelt adopted a new approach toward helping Latin American countries called the Good Neighbor Policy. The purpose of this policy varied from forming mutually beneficial relationships with surrounding foreign republics to attaining complete domination over them. Although America has never been known to publicly support any dictatorship, the Good Neighbor Policy promised Latin American rulers, even iron-fisted dictators, that the U.S. would not interfere with any of their foreign policies, which shows how the United States, through the Good Neighbor Policy, actually supported the dictatorships in Latin America during this time. Although the Good Neighbor Policy was ultimately a success in most foreign republics, it hypocritically supported and strengthened merciless dictators. The support that the U.S. offered these military regimes through the Good Neighbor Policy and their attempt to restore political and financial stability strengthened ruthless political leaders like Trujillo. Without the United States' intervention, Rafael Trujillo would have never become the cold-blooded leader who oppressed and murdered thousands of innocent civilians. Under the rule of Rafael Trujillo, in the fall of 1937, up to as many as 20,000 Haitians were killed. The Parsley Massacre received its name because at the Dominican Porters, individuals would be asked to speak the word Parahil, and Haitians would not be able to pronounce it correctly because of their native tongue, French. Then the guard would proceed to kill them in order to purge the Dominican of Haitians. The bodies were disposed of in Massacre River, which received this name, and following the massacre, the body of water that lies between the Dominican and Haiti. The two countries were on good terms prior to 1937, and it still remains a mystery today as to why Trujillo chose to act out like he did. 
From 1916 to 1978, more than 50,000 people died, including at least 17,000 Haitians. Rafael Trujillo released a public statement informing his people that by murdering hundreds of Haitians for small crimes such as cattle theft, he is fixing a problem. Trujillo said, I will fix this. 300 Haitians are now dead in the city of Banica. This remedy will continue. Not only did Trujillo oppress foreign peoples, but he also oppressed the individuals of his own country. The Mirabal sisters, Patricia, Minerva, and Maria, and many of their family members were in charge of an underground political group opposed to Trujillo in the way he ran his government. Their actions infuriated Trujillo, and as a result, members of the Mirabal family were incarcerated on multiple occasions. Reasons for their arrest included things like leaving a party thrown by Trujillo too early, refusing to write an apology, and refusing to buy books about Trujillo. The three sisters later became known as the Butterflies, and many Dominicans began to support them and openly opposed Trujillo. Trujillo had stripped the family of their land and houses and left their families with nothing, but the three sisters refused to give up their fight for basic human rights. In order to purge the country of the ideas that the Mirabal sisters were spreading, Trujillo felt it necessary to kill them. One day, the girls were driving home when Trujillo's secret police force stopped them. Each girl and the driver were forced out of their jeep, separated, beaten, clubbed, and then strangled to death. The bodies were then put back in the jeep and pushed off a cliff to make their deaths appear as a car accident. However, the death of the Mirabal sisters did not come across as an accident to many Dominican citizens. Eventually, the United States and other countries began to act on the horrific news they had been receiving of Trujillo's actions and made efforts to take Trujillo down. After hearing Venezuelan plots against him, Trujillo retaliated by sending forces to assassinate Venezuelan President Romulo Betancourt on June 24, 1960. News of the failed assassination attempt infuriated world leaders and encouraged the OAS to cut diplomatic ties and force economic sanctions on the Dominican Republic. In 1961, Rafael Trujillo was attacked while traveling home in his car and shot by seven assassins, some of whom were members of his own armed forces. Before he met his deservedly tragic end, Trujillo arguably won much of his power by leading the Dominicans to believing that they owed him loyalty in return for his renewal of a prosperous economy. Trujillo quickly turned gifts into debts. However, in addition to his strategic plot for loyalty, the United States' support of a nationalist dictatorship says a lot against the judgment of the United States leaders of the time. The United States was quick to support what limited information it had about Trujillo's dictatorship. The U.S. was also distracted by Hitler's Nazi Germany and fascism in Europe, yet the U.S. was happily supporting an equally corrupt dictatorship. Although the U.S. ultimately came to the reality of the situation and helped to overthrow Trujillo, the U.S.'s carelessness in diplomatic affairs in the 20th century was a leading cause to Trujillo's long-lasting harmful reign. Despite the numerous significant improvements he made towards Dominican economy, the violent suppression of Dominican citizens' rights and the malevolent acts he committed towards targeted foreign peoples outweigh all positive economic contributions. A New York Times article published during the time of Trujillo's reign is titled, Dominicans Thrive at Cost of Liberty. Is an improvement in material wealth or income really worth the loss of living a life in freedom?